Okay, so in this video, we're going to follow a process called side effect learning. So we're going to bring in a couple of different topics and merge them together. So our goal is to learn about routing redundancy. And the side effect of that, we're going to understand routing protocols, especially one protocol called OSPF, which stands for Open Shortest Path First. So the main goal is to create redundancy within this network, um, a redundancy on, on a router. So this is going to follow a protocol called Hot Standby Routing Protocol. So effectively, we're going to have a backup router, and that's going to be a virtual router. So from our um, topology here, you'll notice we've got an IP address in the middle, which this is going to symbolize the virtual routing um, IP address that the devices are going to, going to use. So symbolically, we've got piece, two, two PCs at the bottom and, and the router at the very top is going to symbolize the ISP. So we want to communicate with that, that particular router. So <clears throat> I've put the um, IP address, labeled the IP address of the devices and the particular interfaces already. Um, if I click on the PC, and go to desktop and IP configuration. I've put those IP addresses in already as well. And you'll notice that the default gateway is set to 1.4. Now, on these routers, normally we would have the default gateway set on the router. So this is actually not a configured address as it stands. So we're gonna go through this pretty quickly um, and then hopefully we'll understand how redundancy on routing works using the hot standby routing protocol. So, I'm going to go in and configure each one of these routers first, give them the IP addresses that are the labeled, and we'll go from there. So let's get on our first router. Go into the CLI. And then I'm going to go no. Enable configure. Um, so no, I'm just going to attack you again just to auto-complete all of these commands. So we are on the ISP, let's go, let's give it a name. Okay, so we're calling it ISP and the interface is gigabit ethernet zero slash zero slash zero. And the IP address we want is 10.10.10.1. And the subnet mask is slash 24. So we're going outside of the default class, and then we're going to go no shutdown to turn it on. So, uh, okay, so that one's up. That one's good to go. Then we're going to go on this one here. Again, CLI. I'll just move this to the side. See? And then enable. Configure terminal. Let's give it a name. Let's call this one router one. This is going to be our active router as we go through. So it's going to be our main one. Um, so we're going to go interface Ethernet zero slash zero slash one. We go ten. Sorry. We go IP. Press ten up ten up ten up two and the subnet mask two five five at two five five at two five five dot zero. Okay, and then no shutdown. So pay attention to the interfaces that are being configured. So that's this one here that's gone green. And then I'm just gonna go back up it and say turn and do the other interface. So it's a bit zero slash zero slash zero and we can give this IP address and two dot one six eight dot one dot one and the default subnet mask for that particular class and then we're going to turn that one on as well. Yeah. So that's those two particular interfaces configured. Now we need this router here. We're going to go CLI, we're going to go no, go enable, and give it a terminal again, give it a 
and let's call it root of part two. So then we're going to go interface give it ethernet zero slash zero slash zero and then IP address ten dot ten dot ten dot three and then outside of the pulp range, it's slash 24, I'm going to turn it on, okay, and then go back, and then do the other interface, so we give it the next 0 slash 0 slash 1, and then the IP address, which is there, is IP, and then 2.168.1.2, and then the default so then that mask and then no shutdown okay so that's all that configured now because the subnet mask or the sorry the default gateway is configured as this 1.4 this particular um network will not work so the pc0 will not be able to com communicate with the asp so we're gonna now configure a routing protocol before we go into the, the um, HSRP or the hot standby routing protocol. So let's go through this. So each one of these routers, let's start from the ISP actually. So let's click on that one and <clears throat> just pay attention to the, the, the line that this is actually configured. So we're going to go into um, this particular mode here. So we're going to do now is got router OSPF one. Okay, so that's that's defining or telling telling us what type of routing protocol we're using. So open short path first. A bit of technical knowledge behind that is on big networks OSPF is is a common routing protocol, and what that does is it, it selects um, the shortest administrative path um, to get to its destination. So administrative path that goes by a number of hops so for argument's sake if we have got um, 100 miles between the source and destination if that is just one route between one router then that is a shorter administrative distance than if it was four miles but if you have 10 hops or 10 different routers so it goes by the number of hops that's administrative distance okay so we're gonna now tell it what networks particularly connected to this um, router so 10.0 and then we, we need to specify what's called a wildcard mask and this is basically just a subnet mask up for it okay, so it's going to tell us um, the network and host addresses what ne the network address is um, based on that, that them flip bits Okay, and then we're just going to give it an area which is zero uh, for this particular instance. It's going to be area one, two, whatever you want it to be, um, whatever you want to label it. And then the second network is the 192.168.1.0. And the um, wildcard mask, and then specify the area. Okay, so we're going to do this pretty, the same thing on, on every single router because that we've only got two networks technically connected. Um, on this topology, so 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 and then 192.168.1.0. That's just the two network addresses. You'll notice that the 10.10.10.1 is a is a host address and it's been assigned to that particular router. Okay, so I need to do the same on R1 as well. So let's go router SPF1 network. 10.10.10.0 and then a wildcard mask. Okay, and then the second network, and do the one to eight. Oops, just that can happen, it's just when it's confirmed. Um, updating the routing protocol they're not being fast enough okay, so that's the two networks 
um, what can commonly happen here because obviously you've got a lot of zeros, you get a lot of um, errors being put in um, unknowingly, so you can put the wrong IP addresses in quite easily. So just be mindful of that. And then we'll just do the, the last one on this router 2 or R2. Okay, so as so, I so say again, router OS PF1. And work 10 .10 10 10 0 and zero dot zero dot zero two five five there is zero network and then network and two and eight dot one dot zero and then zero dot zero dot zero Five and then area zero. So the, the area number can be a particular region or um, area within a company. Um, just assigning an area number to that particular area. Okay, so finally, so that's OSPF configured. So you can see that's coming through now, um, loading. Um, again, when when it sort of did it automatically as I was going through, just press the end key to to knock it down or you can press control shift and six to cancel it. Um, so that's just loading the routing protocol with on that particular router. Okay. So finally now the last task we need to do is to create a standby and an active router. Okay, and it's very simple, it's not complicated. So router one is gonna be our uh, active router, so it's most um, we want the route, we want the priority to go through um, that particular route router. So press enter. Yeah, I'm going to go back up and we're going to specify the interface. So it's gigabit internet zero slash zero slash zero. So it's this side of it here. And then we're going to go standby. One IP one nine two dot one six eight one dot four. So that's assigning this virtual um, IP address to the to the or creating a virtual IP address, creating a virtual router. Okay, and then the next command is standby one preempt. So standby one is just the number the number of the, of the router. So preempt. Let me spell this right. Uh, so preempting is just um, making sure making the routing all this is this is technically our active router. Okay, so as you can see here, it's changing it now from standby to active. Okay, you can see the broad, the routing protocol it knows which one it's using, so HSRP, and then we just need to give it a priority number, and this is the most important part. So standby one priority. Okay, so. The reason why I've got 150, so by default, 100 is um, the routing priority. So if you don't put priority number, it would it would assume that it's 100. And if you've got a tie, it will go to um, the lowest IP address. So um, with the priority number, the number can, you can be, 150 is just a random number. It can be 110, it can be 120, etc. Um, but by that priority number, it will know when it's being routed which is the active router. It will choose the active router based on that priority number. Okay, so on R2, just come out of this box configurations we did. We're going to go interface. Ethernet zero slash zero slash one. And then we're gonna go stand we're gonna give it that virtual IP address or so standby one IP nine two dot one six eight dot one dot four. Okay, so we're standby one again if you had a, a lot of routers a lot of, a lot of connections you, you maybe want to change the standby number. Um and then all we're doing now, we're not doing the standby one preamp, we're just going to give it a priority number. So this is going to be um, 
a lower number because this is our backup router. Okay. So you can see here um, it's changed that status of that router to standby. Okay, so if I go on this particular PC here and I want to ping the ISP, let's see if we've got a connection. So the ISP router is 10.1. A reply straight away, so that's good. A bit slow, but that might be just because it's, it's using um, NAT. Let's just do it again. Yeah, so we're all good. So it's found it path. Now, if we trace route that, okay, we've noticed here now that that, that is working now, so that. This particular PC is going through R1 because that's our priority. Okay. So what happens, I need to test this, this is actually working now, and that you use our backup is let's delete that cable. So let's just assume, let's just play the role players that is um, a failure, whatever. Someone's unplugged the cable or the cable snapped or whatever, whatever's happened. We've deleted that. Okay, so let's go back into the PC and run. Let's just run the thing first. That'll take a few seconds. Okay, so it might just take a few few seconds for it to kick in. Um, Packet Tracer probably sends out requests every 60 seconds. Again, you can configure this in the, in the real world outside of Packet Tracer to um, be looking for this particular protocol every two seconds or, or above, depending on how big or how, how redundant you want your network to be in terms of uptime. So it, you know, it's working pretty well now. And then finally, let's just run Trace route. And then that's going through 1.2. We've got redundancy now, cable been unplugged, everything's working. Um, so in this sort of activity, um, it may seem like complicate, complicated theory, but in, in actual reality when we're actually doing it, it's not that difficult. It's some short commands. Obviously, we've been through the course and um, a lot of the underlying um, configurations in terms of configuring IP addresses on routers, all that should be pretty much ingrained in us by now. Um, the actual concepts of HRP and OSPF are there. Um, we've configured them, so we have got a standby router and we are using the open shortest path first routing protocol. Okay, thank you.